important safety instructions. It comes in a f***ing wooden box. That is freaking cool. You know, I need to think of something really cool to first say on this microphone through a recording. How about like a little vocal warm up? Okay, so remember the important safety instructions that I just tossed aside? <laughs> Let me read these to you because they sound like an evil king is like threatening my castle. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing great today too because I'm so freaking excited. Let's check it out. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, I have a baby bottle. Right. Um, yes, you, you, you may think it's an odd name, but it's a bottle style microphone and it's the baby version of it. The real bottle microphone from Blue is uh, about $5,000. So I thought let's get the less expensive version because it is time that I really step my game up and go analog. I'm not a huge fan of digital microphones anymore. The more I learn about sound, the more I learn that analog really is the way to go. I mean, it's used it's used everywhere. So I figured, why not go back to the old ways of doing things with analog? In fact, you're listening to my voice right now through an analog mic. In fact, every time you've watched a Crazy Ken episode ever since I got this ME66, you've been listening to me through an analog microphone, so... Spoiler alert! The magic's all ruined. But, wait, there's more. I also have a mystery box, which we will be getting to later. So, without further ado, let's get this unboxed, take a look at it, set it up, and then Listen to how it sounds. I have never placed my voice on one of these mics before, so this is gonna be a first time experience for me. I'm doing this blind. Okay, so, well, let's let's set that aside for a sec. Let's just take a look at the, whatever you technically call this part of packaging, <laughs> the sleeve, I guess. It looks pretty, blue. More blue. Baby bottle SL, I forgot what the SL means. It is a large diaphragm studio condenser microphone. And it actually has a high pass filter and a minus 20 decibel pad. So we can do things like, let's say there's a little bit of background noise, like an air conditioner or something, flip a switch, and you can remove that sound without any post-processing. However, you can absolutely do post-processing post with this microphone, of course. Or you can run it into a a mixing board like a Behringer X32 or something else that you could get instead of buying a car. Just, you know, sound stuff is expensive. Just watch it. Okay, time for the ultimate reveal. Oh yes, that, that is awesome. Holy balls, hang on. Okay, so you got a little quick start thingamajig. We'll probably take a look at that later. You know what? Oh shit, <laughs> it's stuck. Okay, uh, hold on a second. Well, at least we know it's securely in there. Okay, I'm gonna approach this a different way. <laughs> I'm gonna take this out, and we'll get to that in a sec, because that is, this is too cool. I'm gonna get to that later. Okay, blue sticker, that's pretty cool. You can wear that on your car. Be like, yo, f you, Neumann, I use blue. Ha ha ha. Neumann's actually really good. Um, you also get one of those, um, like one of those games you used to play in elementary school, like, all right, pick a number, you know, this is kind of like the new version of that. And then we get a monolith that just shat out a card. We'll look at that in a sec. And, um, I believe that's it. That's, uh, that's all she wrote. We'll set that off to the side and we'll get back to our monolith. Actually, I'm going to be honest, I ordered this quite a while ago. I don't exactly remember all that comes with it, but I think this is the shock mount. Oh, yes, indeed, that is a shock mount. So this is what holds the microphone. So, if, you know, if there's any vibrations or movements in the room or if something bumps the stand, the mic stand, you know, this, uh, this type of shock mount or cradle has these bungee cords in it to absorb said vibrations to keep the sound more clean. So that's another thing that helps. Um, 
I'm thinking I should also get a pop filter for this, but I, I don't, I didn't get one yet. So, um, that's really cool. We're gonna kinda set that over there. There you go. Now, the cool part. It comes in a fucking wooden box. That is freaking cool. Like, that's legizzle. I probably shouldn't have said that, I'm sorry. But yeah, it, look at that, nice wood box. I like that. So we'll take that off, All right? Blue, but in fact it is red. It's an optical mind trick. Huh, baby bottle. Quality control certification. Back in the old days, they used to, I'm pretty sure the inspector used to sign their initials on these. I, I swear they used to do that because I've seen one of these before at a studio I work at. <laughs> now they just do a barcode. Well, I hope these are still like handmade. At least I think they're handmade. That kind of removes a little bit of the handmadeness, <laughs> but still, if it sounds good, that's what I care about. And there she is, assuming it's a she. Wow, I uh, I don't know if I can actually use this. It's so beautiful and pristine looking. Oh my gosh. Get out of town. That just, that definitely has that like vintage inspiration in the design, which is what I'm going for, but I'm not just looking for vintage inspiration in the design, I'm looking for vintage inspiration on how it sounds, or in how it sounds, and how it works. There you go, XLR on the bottom for your nice analog interface. Oh, this just feels really, I don't wanna get fingerprints on it, but I, I just wanna like feel it. Like this, this feels really good in your hands. That's nice and metal, definitely vintage inspired in the design. So as I was saying earlier, I'm ditching the whole like digital thing. Like I don't want to do digital freaking sound anymore, which means I'll be getting rid of my old road, which it's kind of funny to think about. Over a million people have heard my voice through this thing. But uh, I think I think it's time to move on from this. This has served me well. This plugs in just through USB type B. For those who don't know, you might be like, Ken, that is the weirdest looking USB port I've ever seen. How the fricky frack are you gonna plug that into your computer? You don't. You don't plug it into your computer, and that's the point. That's what I wanna do. You plug it into a mixing board. You plug it into an audio interface. You don't just plug it into a computer because honestly, that's kinda shitty. It can be really shitty at times. Now, if you're on a budget and you just want a plug and play solution, go for something like that Rode NT USB. It'll fit you hopefully well. What is it, a shirt? I don't know. But I'm going analog. So that's where the mystery box comes into play. And before we get to this, I should probably clear this off a little. Ah, much better, right? Oh, it's all taped together. Okay. Um, I just trimmed my nails, so this is gonna be tricky. But we'll make it work. All right, you know what? Uh, one second. Well, I wanna cut my fingers a break, but I don't wanna cut my fingers off. So, Kershaw to the rescue. All right. And that should do it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, say hello to the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. That's enough of that. Okay, so this is how we get the analog signal into the computer. And it goes over USB. I honestly wanted to go with Thunderbolt, but it seems like all the cool, hip new audio interfaces are going to Thunderbolt 3. And poor little old me is still on Thunderbolt 2. So I had to settle for USB, but I think we'll be okay. Because I've used USB with Behringer soundboards, like 32 channel Behringer soundboards, and it sounds fine. So we'll be good here. So yeah, Focusrite, Scarlet. Let's have a peek. Important safety instructions. And there it is. Pretty, nice and metal. Kind of a brushed metal-y finish. Knobs. And some other stuff. So this is, yeah, this is, oh, silica gel. Do not eat. What a shame. Okay. And, look, ooh, look at that. Hang on, I believe this is our included Fiery red USB cable, that's kind of cool. Let's take it out of the condom unit. Okay, 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 Kershaw. No, that, that wasn't manly enough. Let's do that again. There we go. 
This may be a little bit of overkill. Oh, it's just a single piece of tape. Well, you know, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna poke the metal. Go away, Kershaw. I'm just gonna take the tape off. I want it to be all cool. Oh, shit. That was probably a bad idea. I just smacked it against my Aspen. Yeah, I said Aspen. That's what this type of wood is. Yeah, dangerous, do not eat desiccant silica gel. And then Japanese. Okay, so here we have our XLRs. Wine, and I'm guessing instrument? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Line and instrument, I guess. One and two. And then the gain? For how much of a signal will allow to pass through the XLR ports. I hope I'm using the right terminology here because I'm kind of new to this. We have our 48 volt phantom power, which essentially means we can power the microphones through the XLR instead of having to attach the uh, microphones to like a power ballast or plug them into a outlet or something. We can just power them through phantom power. Then we have a monitor dial for our output, which I'm guessing is here. We have quarter inch out for our headphones. Flipping it over, one, two, three, boom. We have our K port. I think that's a Kensington security lock, I'm guessing. There's our USB Type-B to output to the computer. And then our line, oh, those are line outputs, not inputs. Designed in England, made in chain ore. Perfecto. All right, focus right. We're gonna test you out next. <laughs> oh, and it is bus powered, so it just runs off of USB for the power and to uh, push the digital signal to the computer. Okay, so remember the important safety instructions that I just tossed aside? <laughs> okay, let me read these to you because they sound like an evil king is like threatening my castle. Okay. Read these instructions. Keep these instructions. Heed all warnings. Follow all instructions. <laughs> what? <laughs> I am serious those are the first four lines of the safety instructions for the focus right oh it definitely was made in england wasn't it okay <laughs> read these instructions keep these instructions heed all warnings follow all instructions do not use this apparatus near water <laughs> oh my gosh this was um Th that was a treat. It also says protect the power cord. Th there is no power cord for this. It's bus powered, you nitwits. Yeah, it's it's clearly a general purpose sheet, not specifically for the, what is it, the 2-2-2-I-2? Two, two, two two? That doesn't really roll off the tongue. Yeah, uh, but I trust this. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers and podcasters use this brand, so I'm going to do it. I'm not a huge fan of the, like, serif typeface on the top, but, uh, you know font, I guess. Uh, I'll never know. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's okay. I guess it's classy. Okay, that, that was fun. That was incredibly fun. Before I complete the setup of the new analog microphone, I'm just going to record a quick sample from this digital microphone to remind everyone how it sounds, and we'll do a little comparison. Let's plug stuff in. Big, red, shiny cable. I was going to use another USB Type-B cable, but I couldn't find one during the 60 seconds I searched, so I'm just going to use the provided one for this other microphone quick. All right. That's the HDMI port. There we go. Okay. That's a really uh, tense cable, not very bendy. I'm an idiot, dude. Okay, what am I doing? I need to like lay off the boozies and the twosies. I need to plug this into here, not the focus right. Yeah, focus right. That's what I need to do right now. Jeez Louise. Okay, so I'm currently speaking into the normal mic I use to talk to you guys. The Sennheiser ME66, which runs to the Blackmagic camera. I'm going to switch over to Adobe Audition now with the USB mic that I've been using up until this day. And this is what I sound like coming through the USB microphone, the Rode NT-USB. Right, now that we have that down, let's have a listen for the first time ever to the baby bottle, which again, I've never used before. This is new to me. Right, so I've been doing some thinking during that jump cut, and uh, I realized I didn't really buy a stand for the baby bottle. <laughs> I may have to MacGyver some things together, because I, I didn't really want to buy a bunch of accessories until I knew I was keeping it, so I'm just going to have to jerry-rig something. I don't have a stand for it. I also... crap. I don't think I have an XLR cable for it either. I'm just going to have to borrow from another piece of equipment, just, just for today at least. <laughs> Should have checked my grocery list. Let's see, milk, eggs, fabric softener. Oh, yeah, XLR cable. It's on there. I didn't buy it, though. Mm. 
Okay, now for the fun part. Let's put the baby bottle on this NT-USB stand and hope it balances. Yeah. All right, let's jerry-rig something together. So unplug that, and we're gonna piss off Adobe Audition. It's probably gonna be like, you unplugged something. Yep, there it goes. You unplugged something, you son of a bitch. I don't know what to do, I'm just a computer. I can just calculate trillions of operations per millisecond, and I don't know what to do when you unplug something. Actually, trillions of operations per nanosecond. No, that's not realistic. I was joking about that. Okay, obviously I'm doing this wrong. That's, uh, that's not supposed to happen. Gosh darn it, how do you take this thing off? Okay, hang on, I'm a professional. Actually, I might have been doing it right. See, it's on a, like a rivet, so it like spins around so you can swivel it, but then it's like weird to unscrew. Oh wait, no, I was doing it right. Ha! Boom. Okay, so this, which actually has a pop filter, will sit off to the side. I don't have a pop filter for the, the uh, baby bottle. I might have a spare one lying around somewhere. We'll have the little shock mount cradle thing here. And uh, we're gonna... Just make sure I do this right. I'm gonna assemble that bad boy. Like that, oh, there you go. I just gotta screw it in. I want it nice and centered. That's a lot of screwing. Um, that sounded dirty, I'm sorry. It's, it's just a long screw. There we go, nice and toit, like toyga. You're very toit, Mr. Powish. Very toit, like a toyga. It's like, it's, it's like the descent stage of Apollo. It's like the... Lunar excursion module. The swinger has landed. Okay, um, actually I could just, you know, the XLR cable won't clear, I'll need to put this on. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on this thing here. And, and it came with a bushing, so I can go from whatever that is to uh, five eighths. It's, yeah, I forget the actual like dimensions of the bushings and stuff. So yeah, it's a little MacGyvery, but uh, it'll work for this test. I will get an actual stand for it when the time is right. And now, I just hijacked this XLR from the uh, Sennheiser kit. Helps if I plug it in the right way. And bon appetit. We have a nice uh, analog connection going here. So now we gotta go to the interface and then from the interface to the computer. Alley oop. We'll just go into the first XLR here, plug her in. It's kind of a mess of cables. It's also just for testing purposes. When I have this set up in my office, it'll look a lot neater, hopefully. I can see our USB light there, so that's good. Now we just gotta get it configured with Audition. Well, I clearly have not wiped down this screen in a while, so I apologize for that. Let's take a look at the preferences. Scarlet 2i2 USB. So that just detected right away. Perfect. I'm gonna turn phantom power on. Turn up our gain. We have input one. Okay, so you can't see this right now, but I'll show you this later. The uh, volume knobs actually blink when a signal is being picked up on the uh, focus right, so that's really cool. Yeah, I was having problems picking it up in Audition, but I think it's set to the wrong device that would oh that would be why input one and input two okay so i actually can split it over this usb that's cool check one two oh we got signal i'm gonna turn this down all the way turn it up all the way nope that didn't do anything okay so that monitor dial must actually be for monitoring somewhere else the the actual like signal we're sending in the computer just must be dependent on our gain fader check 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 gonna crank it up Check, check, check. Oh yeah, now we're clipping. Okay, so yeah, that's on the gain fader. Uh, the gain fader is at is turned all the way down and it's still getting a signal, so I guess you can't go all the way down on this thing. That's interesting. Okay, so it's not touching the red. I gotta reset that warning. There we go. Check, one, two, check, one, two. Beautiful, okay, we're not clipping. So, I'm gonna plug some headphones in and test this baby out. All right, I'm not gonna listen to this directly through any type of input monitoring because I wanna hear it after I make the recording. So, I'm gonna record an audition. You know, I need to think of something really cool to first say on this microphone through a recording. How about like a little vocal warm up? The wire is wound around the wheel. You're listening to WFCK Radio, where the only thing missing is you. Yeah, that um, sounds pretty freaking good, and it's gonna sound better once I actually put some processing on there to give it a little more texture and a little more punch, but oh my gosh, that sounds great. Let's have a listen to the USB, uh, USB mic here again. 
And this is what I sound like coming through the USB microphone, the Rode NT USB. Yeah, I mean, they sound a, a kind of similar, but I can I can tell the uh, baby bottle definitely has that warmer sound. And um, I bet if I listened even closer, I'd be able to notice there's less of a noise floor, less background noise with this because we have the filters built in. I believe that's a... <laughs> is that a... Oh my gosh, I'm just, I always uh, reverse low pass and high pass filter. But anyway, that's on there. Yeah, let's do some more samples. Now that I think about it, that wasn't really a fair test because I wasn't very close to the microphone, but again, I don't have a pop filter for it yet, so I have to be careful. But when I moved closer to the capsule, I definitely got way better results. So let's do another test. I got my headphones here. I'm input monitoring now. I just gotta say something that doesn't have a lot of P's in it because I don't really have a pop filter on this bad boy. I do the trick where I put my finger in front of my lips, but that sometimes will degrade the sound. You won't get as much fidelity, if you will. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Computer Clan Radio, where we don't use pop filters. Yeah, I know it's kind of unfortunate. So today on uh, today's program, we have special guest Tony Shaloub in the studio. Just kidding. We couldn't afford him and his agent laughed at us. Yeah, this sounds really freaking good and this is with no post-processing and again i don't have a pop filter so forgive the pivoty pops <laughs> uh, yeah no pop filter yet but oh man the warmth of this oh it sounds so freaking good for the this baby bottle here wow i can't imagine what the five thousand dollar version sounds like <laughs> what do we talk about the weather but yeah this sounds really good oh man how close can I get to this thing? Okay, so right about here, yeah. But we're really gonna pop, 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 pivoty, pivoty, pop, 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 pop. Yeah, I'm trying to not pivoty pop so much uh, without a pop filter. Oh, I just want to listen to my voice. Like we could do some cool radio stuff with this. Welcome to Computer Clan Live Radio. This is a kick-ass microphone. I, I don't. I've only been using it for a few minutes, but so far I really recommend it. So if you're looking for a good analog microphone solution to do pristine warm sound and you want to treat sound very seriously man this blue baby bottle this sounds like the way to go all right we're on to our next guest now uh tony shalhoub oh wait i already did that one eh, bummer so there's our little plasma ring there it glows when uh, a signal's being picked up so you know that's really cool i wonder if it turns red if it overloads check 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 i can't oh yeah it does turn orange and then check 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 then red ha that's so cool. Oh, dude, that's so cool. All right, cool, 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 baby. All right. Overall, I just think it's awesome how we have a blue microphone plugged into a red scarlet. I mean, we have blue and scarlet. Everything is just colors nowadays. And I'm using a black magic camera. What is that? I got a scarlet, a blue, and a black magic. Everything is colors, ladies and gentlemen. But I cannot wait to do more projects with this mic, especially since I was thinking of maybe picking up some audiobook stuff, doing some uh, recordings for audiobooks, and this would be a great way to do that. So even though I can't recommend the Blue Baby Bottle and the Focusrite Scarlet enough, I know that not everyone is going to be in the market for that type of setup. So I want to be able to help. I am going to sell this microphone, and it will include a signed certificate of authenticity. This microphone was used in some of our most popular videos with over millions of views, and it's being used on Crazy Ken. This is the real deal that was used in the Computer Clan for many years, and over a million people have heard my voice through this freaking microphone on all those videos. So, the certificate of authenticity from myself, Crazy T. Ken, and of course the microphone itself with the pop filter, and the stand, I'll include it all for a single price for you. So just hit me up on Twitter on the Computer Clan. Just say, hey, I'm interested in buying the microphone and I'll give you more detail. I'm calling this a win. Piece of cake to set up. Check out the Blue Baby Bottle and the Scarlet if you want a great, warm, powerful, serious audio solution that won't break the bank. I super recommend this. And thank you very much to Podcast Stage for helping me make my decision on these products as well. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on.